Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel is written to us by Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached and they said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions for themselves. We are here in a deserted place. And he said to them, give them food yourselves. And they replied, but all we have are five loaves and two fishes. Unless we go ourselves out and buy food for all these people, now the men there numbered about 5,000. Not sure why they don't mention the women and children, but that's the way they thought then. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. And then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing. He broke it and he gave it to the disciples to eat. They all ate and they all were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, there were still 12 baskets left. This is the gospel of the Lord. Whenever we try to talk about this mystery that I'm going to try to talk about today. Of course, it's true on about 15 levels, and the most I can do is scratch a little bit of the surface, but let's try. Here's the problem that God is always trying to resolve. How can he take all of the suffering of human history since the beginning of time? Imagine it. How can he take all of the joy and excitement and satisfaction since the beginning of time and give it universal meaning? That's what it means to save something, to connect heaven and earth, as that first song we just heard. How do you connect our little tiny lives, each left on our own, with something bigger something eternal, something that matters, something that lasts. In a certain sense, whether we know it or not, that's the task of every life. And most of us feel like we are all on our own, and that's what the disciples here even want to do. Send them out on their own. Let them take care of their own food. We can't be worried about so many. And so Jesus creates a worldview of abundance, of enoughness, of more than enoughness, as we see by the 12 baskets left over. And that's the symbolic meal that you're coming to right now. A meal that is supposed to take you out of your tiny world where you never feel like there's enough and to give your little life universal and eternal meaning. That's what it means to be saved. And it happens now. It's not something that happens when you die. You know, the unfortunate phrase that we used in that second reading uh, was, do this as a memorial of me. So we think of a memorial service, something that sort of commemorates something that happened back then, and we all think well of it and go on with our lives. I want to give you what is really the meaning of this in Jewish religion. To do something in memory of is to move into deep memory. Now that's actually what's happening when you pray. Small memory is where most human beings live their lives. What you can consciously remember from last year, from when you were a teenager, when you were a child, your first job, that's, that's tiny memory. And if you try to create your identity, your meaning, your purpose from that tiny memory, you'll almost always be unsatisfied. You're never going to feel big enough, deep enough, wonderful enough, connected enough. 
And so the Eucharist seeks to connect your suffering with all the suffering since the beginning of time. And that's what it means to do something in deep memory with God. Now, if you've never been there, this probably isn't making a bit of sense to you. I gotta be honest. You say, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> well, that probably means you've never prayed deeply. Because when you pray, what starts happening is you start connecting in ever wider circles. Your little life, yes, with your parents, your children, your grandparents, your family, your nationality, your country, your childhood. But if you're really in, living in this kingdom of God that Jesus is talking about here, it moves beyond any one country, any one nationality, any one race. The circles just keep widening. You see, when we receive Jesus, Jesus is another word for everything. <laughs> Are you ready for everything? Are you ready to connect your suffering with the universal suffering of God? Are you ready to see your daily inconveniences and trials, and they surely come, with the trials and suffering of everybody else? You are not separate. It's all one suffering, the suffering of God. It's all one suffering, the suffering of Jesus. Jesus invites us into that universal journey and suddenly our little oh-so-ordinary lives have transcendent and universal meaning. Brothers and sisters, if human beings cannot find meaning for their suffering and for their joy, it works both ways, they pass in a moment. It's over and gone, over and gone, over and gone. That's short memory. And that's how most people live their lives. To act in memory of Him is to slip into deep memory, universal identity, universal meaning. That's the only way most of our small, ordinary lives will ever feel like they could in any way be important or good or matter to God. I mean, if you wake up like I do, don't you say, who am I? Why would I matter to anybody? I could die tomorrow and most people wouldn't even notice. So we all feel so small. And so he invited us into a universal meal, taking a little bit of food and feeding everybody with it to symbolize this invitation into universal community, universal friendship, universal unity. There is only one suffering, and it is the suffering of God. There is only one happiness, there is only one ecstasy, and it's the happiness and the joy of God. And you are invited in your little life to know that, to consciously participate in that. So when you eat of the bread, you are saying yes to everything. I guess if we really understood it, none of us would come forward. I know I wouldn't. <laughs> when you drink of the cup, you are knowing that you are participating consciously, incarnationally, deliberately, in all of the suffering. Just imagine on the earth right now, the amount of suffering. Who of us could bear it? And so Jesus symbolically bears it on the cross and says, come with me. We can do it together. You cannot carry it alone, but together we can eat of this meal, this universal meal that transcends your individual life your individual sadness, and even your individual happiness. You see, sanctity isn't something that happens after you die. That's the unfortunate effect of canonizing saints. So, no, as soon as you enter into that mystery, you are a saint. Santos means whole. It means connected to everything, connected to everybody. So I invite you with daring, with delight, 
with purpose, and on any one day, even with partial understanding, to come to eat of this bread and drink of this cup, where the incarnation is now moved beyond Jesus into people, into nature, even into the physical elements of bread and wine. What is this saying? It should be obvious. God is everywhere. And it's we who are nowhere and never ready to encounter the presence that is always inviting us into the ecstasy of God and into the suffering of God. When you receive the body and blood of Christ, you are saying yes to both of them.